I'm going to stop Robbie and Sam right now. And Robbie, I'm, I'm unfortunately, I got to call bullshit on your fucking CIA involvement okay. with Andy Warhol. Oh my God, dude. Hey. Shut up. How no, I love it's you to pieces. Do You're you so don't, crazy. You don't think <laughs> CIA use a little common sense. You know who paid Andy Warhol a ton? Motherfucking Campbell's soup. purposes only. You'd be an idiot to listen to anything these degenerates say. Invest at your own risk, do research, but seriously don't listen to these ass clowns. Now enjoy Cash Daddies. Welcome to Cash Daddies. We're banking fatties. A lot of chaos here today. A lot of chaos. Hope you guys had a great weekend. I hope you guys have a great week coming up. Uh, join me as always from uh, WeWorks, Jay Nice, Juicy Johnny, Johnny Woodard. Yeah, Juicy Johnny. Hey, now. What's going and on? And everybody's favorite Terminator. He's 50, <laughs> and he's still playing basketball. How we do we? Boom, 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 This boom. is how we do it right here. How we talk about what's going on in your life with the with your arch rival. How we do it. Dude, you know, it was funny at first, and I'm thinking somebody did this as a joke, and like I'm like, ha ha, that's you know, a good one. But it's like every week I get like a hundred texts, DMs, like, yo, dude, is who is this for real? Like they are <laughs> Wait, real? so you think you think somebody found made a fake how we do it thing to torture you is what you're thinking. I do. Yeah, I think somebody did it. Oh, no, dude, that was a long time ago. That's a real I, I, guy. I don't know, man. I think I, that's a real no. guy, dude. That's a real so. guy. Do you I have a doppelganger know. who has the exact same name as you, and you both sound like a fucking uh, hip hop song from the uh, an R and B song from Montel the Jordan. Yeah. yeah Montel By the way, Jordan. I saw Montel Jordan do that live at a playoff game for the Clippers like last year. That's like the perfect sort of halftime act like it's all it's always those like 90s r&b acts that that are just off the radar now that the are funniest perfect. thing about older blacks is that everybody treats them like young blacks like like all blacks are the same age like i would listen to this guy and um there's this uh radio show called Ro rogan and rodney and they always have rodney uh the former usc quarterback rodney pete rodney pete yeah Rodney Pete, they would have him read like song of the week and it's always some fresh new hip hop song, but he's like in his late fifties. If not, I think he's late fifties or mid fifties. Oh, at he's least. gotta be. Yeah. Yeah. And he's like always reading. He's like this latest strip. And you're like, it sounds like your grandpa. He's 57. Yeah. He's 57. He's 57. And there's like this latest strip come from young player. And you're like, you sound so old talking like that, but they don't care. Cause white corporate America thinks all black people are the same age. Well, Montel Griff, we did a we did a Geico commercial. Jordan, Jordan, not Montel Griff. Montel, Montel. Yeah, Montel fucking Jordan. We did a we did a Geico commercial in Atlanta three years ago. Hats produced the thing, and let me tell you something. He's from LA. He's from California. He has a church. He's a pastor in a church in a uh, north of Atlanta. Yo, he's a legit six foot eight. That's yeah, a big. Sure. That's a big dude, and he was he was a hooper. He played yeah, who? Dude, it's impossible to be 6'8 and not play basketball. The guy's and be like, black? Come on. The guy's like the nicest guy in the world, man. He's like, a, he's just a good dude. And, you just uh, tell that, that that was when like hip hop was just fun, right? Now it's like, yeah. it's like everybody's getting pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't all about, you know, hoes and crack. It was, you know, LL J Cool J brought in, you know, he had like 8,000 bitches. It was good back then. Yeah, it was good back then. It was a good time. Anyways, uh, this is not a hip-hop podcast. This is a financial podcast. Oh, okay. What do you guys think of the week, man? I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. How we, how we do it, okay, is has been rocking my world with this 
Bud Anheuser Busch stock numbers. Let's yes. get into that. What do you think, dude? Look, I mean, I don't I, look, and I and I read a bunch of shit after about how everyone said they couldn't believe that Fox put out that statement about the billions. That, first of all, today the market took a beat down, which is what we said it would last week. We made a crushing today. The Patreon dudes made a killer today. We That's broke out. Patreon.com slash cash daddy. Join the revolution. We crushed it. But Bud B U D, it fucking it was near an all-time high today. It was one of the only things that went up. It's near 66 bucks a share, which you know, when they lost billions, it went down to 64. Um, but you know, I'll tell you what stock actually took a bigger hit than Bud ever did. Uh you know, Fox, Fox News went from 33 down to 31, which isn't huge, but percentage wise, it's a lot more than Budweiser took a beating. So I, I don't know, man. It's just uh the bottom like, I was talking to Johnny about it. Did they piss off Bud Light drinkers? Hell yes. I saw it happen at the Yankee game, man. I saw it with my own eyes. You know, I saw I saw true Bud Light drinkers say fuck you, and and they went right from Bud Light to Bud. So, you know, it's funny really- because I, you know, that might be the missing thing because I saw reported in Beer Business Daily, the great publication, Beer <laughs> Business Daily. I saw reported that they are losing market share. Bud Light is, though, and it didn't say anything about Budweiser. It said that Coors Light and Miller Light's dollar shares were up 3.5% and 3.1% respectively and then uh they're saying that cases of bud light have fallen 6.7 percent year to date and 10.7 percent for the week ending on april 8th but i think it's like you said howie i think they're probably mostly just switching to other anheuser bush products which is i mean what's the point like if you quit drinking bud light and you start drinking stella that's the same fucking company is that you just know, education? Like people don't know that they're owned by the same. No, people don't know shit. I'm okay. starting to think more and more. I'm reading. Look, this is the first. I I'm on a two week deal where I've actually started reading a little bit of news, and I can see why I don't read the news or listen to it. I I understand why, because I'm starting to think 75 percent of the country is pretty much moronic. <laughs> I mean, just pure stupid. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm reading the shit about. Bud, Bud Light, and it keeps going. The bottom line is Bud Light is definitely losing market share. Now, is that going to hurt the stock? No, because since 2012, nobody's drank Bud Light. No, you know, a few people in this country drink it. But when you got a billion people drinking Bud a bit in China, a billion people drinking Bud in India, uh, you know the most popular beer in England is fucking Budweiser? How is that possible? I mean, but it's true. So, you know, the, the overall uh, stock, it, like I said, it's not going to get hit. I like the way they got rid of those people, though, at Budweiser who came up with the campaign. That's yeah, they of- just got rid of those, that big teeth chick, dude. She <laughs> like. She took the fall, man. She took the fall. I'm sure they gave her a few million and say, hey, look, sorry, we got to do it. Someone's got to take the fall, babe. You'll be all right. I, dude, they may, you know, honestly, thinking kind of on another level, it makes me wonder if they had her go out there and do those stupid podcasts and shit, you know, just to kind of take all of the, take all the beat yeah, of Patsy, take you know, the just heat totally, off. We're going to give yeah. you a giant package. Walk the plank, yeah, basically. Yeah. Right. Of course. Yeah, I totally <laughs> believe that, dude. I think she just jumped on the. And then that allows her to go to other places and be yeah. like, see, I, I jumped on the, uh, yeah, I think it's crazy. Well, you know, sticking in, in, and on the other side too, you know, we're talking about big days news. I mean, yesterday CNN got rid of, uh, that one fucking clown that's been Don there Don Lemon. Years. They got rid of him. And then so Fox got rid of, uh, what the Tucker, other Tucker Carlson, Carlson. Yeah, the yeah. number For one guy who just started watching the news. You don't seem to know anything. <laughs> yeah, really. I don't, yeah. Although to be I fair, none of that is news. Neither of those shows are news. I don't follow these tars, man, because it's, it's just complete garbage. So Johnny, do you have that fucking Twitter thing I sent you? Can you put that up? You texted to me. I'm sorry, Howie. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, oh, I got you right here. Yeah. The, the, uh, the black rock, uh, tweet. Yeah, this, yeah, okay. this I got blows the my mind. This is where I'm looking at it. And this, God bless this poor lady, man. Because yeah. this lady, this lady yeah. writes down, here she is, a 
She's a she's a real solid. I don't even think she's a libertarian, but she's definitely from the right. But who gives a shit? She said BlackRock owns fifty nine million shares of Dominion. BlackRock owns forty five million shares of Fox. They sued it. So look at this. So she puts out this fucking tweet. Now God bless right. you, Michelle. Yeah. God bless you. You, you de- I don't know if you can read or write. You're not a rocket scientist. And the reason I'm saying this is because BlackRock owns zero shares of Dominion. Because no, hold on, hold on. Now, now you're right in one way and wrong in another. They do own percentage of Dominion, just not Dominion voting. They own Dominion they own percentage. Energy. Yes, it's, it's a publicly traded company. Yeah. So, yeah. so wait, uh, is it entirely different? Are they related in any way no. or just the name? No, no they just got the same name. <laughs> oh, no. that's fun. Got the same name. I own. By the way, Dominion. Uh, a symbol D. That's one of the best energy companies. It's it's a great energy company out of Virginia. They pretty much at natural gas. Uh, they do. They have tons of natural gas in the Rockies, the whole East Coast. That company's been around forever. It's a great company. BlackRock owns it. So does and everybody else. Everybody owns a part of that country. That company. Now fucking Dominion voting. Uh I can't even say how pissed off I saw this lady put this shit up there. Dominion Voting is a private company that was bought by a private equity firm down yeah. on Wall Street. They own them on Wall Street. It's yeah. a private company. And let me tell you, those two guys that bought that company, Dominion Voting, a couple of years ago, they got to be two of the smartest fucking guys on Wall Street. Because you know, before they bought this company, they said, why are we buying it? What's the equity? Well... If there's a lawsuit someday and these guys win, shit, we're going to make 15,000 times what we pay for it. And that's what they did. So when you get into it, these guys all used to work at BlackRock, the Carlisle Group. And there's one other. BlackRock didn't work for BlackRock. They worked at They used to way back in the day. Maybe one of them, not both of them. So they they have, you know, BlackRock owns like 3% of the Carlisle Group. I looked it up. And yeah. so, so they're all swamp creatures for sure. It's all the same shit. It's all the same That's people. Any now, private but what we don't know and how you can, you can clear this up if you want, who gave these guys seed money to start the start, the company, which is called Staple street, not, not state street, but Staple street, which are which is who bought, uh, which is who bought Dominion Voting. I highly doubt anybody gave them any seed money. Okay, these, interesting. Okay. Oh, okay. no, again, they, these guys had money. These guys I'm are listening. I'm these open minded. Are, these guys are investment bankers, Sam. They've been on Wall Street for years and years and years and years putting deals together. Yeah, but is it the rule? Like, Howie, I'm not trying to argue with you either. I'm just trying to to play like you know just knowing how my whole thing has been i've been told since the beginning of time never invest your own money that's why i've been told now most of these most of these private equity guys actually want to invest their own money for you started a business sam your own business yes you want to have the least amount as investors with their fingers in your pot as possible. You, you want that business to be yours. All I right, mean, I respect that. That's why the, I. The, it's probably just those two guys are the majority of that whole firm. Because like, if I was to start a hedge fund in New York city, man, I, I don't want a lot of uh, money to start it up. I, I'd like to start it myself and see what happens because I don't want to have to pay people every three months, you know? So I think it's mostly these two guys. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that that's where the mistake came in. That's one of the Lehman brothers, I think. So that's that's where it all came from right there. So but just, that lady puts out the fucking tweet, Dominion, they own 40. And I'm like, lady, please. Well, it's funny. I just looked in our mentions too, and not many people are even commenting on that. Like no, one, one they person want to run with it. This is the way, this is why I said 75. But look, all you people that are following Michelle, whatever the fuck her name, you need to listen to Cash Daddies. Well, okay. So I mean, let's get it. Let's get into that because like, I feel the need to defend conspiracy theorists here. But, you know, if you take a look at like, Let's take a look at um, 
uh, you know, Bud Light, right? You're like, hey, I'm going to, um, I'm going to push back against Bud Light, so I'm gonna go drink Coors Light. Well, at, at the probably the deepest, deepest levels, as you go, who owns who owns who? You're probably gonna find BlackRock owns a part of Bud Anheuser Busch and Coors Light, whoever owns Coors TAP. Light. Molson Coors, TAP. Of course they so, do. So, so you, you know, when you get into Coke and Pepsi, right, you think you're like, they're, they're at war with each other. But in reality, they're at the deepest levels. They're owned by the same people. So that's why people are going, oh, Dominion voting is suing Fox News. When you go far back enough, you'll probably find that they have the same owners. So, I mean, not in this instance, but it does happen a lot. Not on, not in that situation because Dominion Voting is a private company. Yeah, that, that's why. That's a private company. Well, and I, I found a- too, Howie, something that you've mentioned, and it's a loop. It's kind of a dirty trick that a lot of these people who say, oh, you know, they own fifty percent of this and seventy percent of this, is that they're talking about like Vanguard, you know, in their index funds, which is just they own every, they literally keep, own everything. I keep saying that, and if you're listening, please pay attention when it's. When you say BlackRock, they yeah, they got their fingers and everything. It's not because they want to control it. It's because they want their investors to have a percentage. In other words, if you work at BlackRock and you're a portfolio, yeah. you're a portfolio manager. Yeah. You you have to abide by certain diversification rules. So, in other words, if if the big boss comes in and says, "Okay, you know, we had a great quarter. We brought in another $100 billion in assets. All right, John, Fred, Mary, uh, here's the $500 billion. Start buying stock. We got to diversify this shit. So they'll sit down and say, okay, let's come up with our top 10 favorite oil companies. Let's come up with our top 10 pharmaceutical companies. Let's come up with our top Fucking uh, technology companies, small right, cap. Right. And they'll go out, Sam, and they'll buy, they'll buy five hundred to a thousand different companies because right. they have to diversify a fund. They're these, they're handling billions of dollars in pension funds, four hundred one ks, uh, you know, hedge funds, whatever. So they have to buy, like Johnny said, they got to buy everything. So. You know, Vanguard owns, owns everything, but it's only because they have so many fucking mutual funds. Look up Dodge and Cox. Dodge and Cox oh, is it's one. Already, of, I already have it up, actually. That's weird. Dodge and Cox. I, I love Dodge and Cox. I love Dodge and Cox. Bro. I do it all the time. Every time I walk in West Hollywood, it's just That's like. That's all hey, I do is whoa, Dodge Cox whoa. all day. <laughs> hey, dude, not now. I'm heading to work. Dodge, Dodge and Cox is one of the most solid mutual funds. It's been around forever. And I mean, that used to be, Dodge and Cox used to be what you put your real wealthy people in because they had fucking good funds. How, why do they have good funds? Because they're about buying everything. They own all those companies that BlackRock owns. I guarantee you they do. You know, because they have to diversify. So that's what people listen to the show or you're listening, you need to understand, you know, BlackRock, do they do bad things? Fuck yeah, they do. Um <laughs> Do they do bad things? Fuck yeah. So uh, we're going to, because we got a little start today, we're going to bring you the guest a little earlier than normal. uh, And then we'll get back to the stories of the week. And then we'll get into, um, then we'll get into uh, Howie's picks. So why don't we bring in Robbie, the fire. Bernstein. Hey, everybody. We want to tell you about our friend, Jay Zygman and copymycrypto.com. Guys, we've seen so many people making ridiculous money from crypto, but did you know it would be really easy for you to do the same? The Copy My Crypto membership site shows you the coins that YouTuber James McMahon personally holds and allows you to copy him. It's like having a big brother who knows exactly what he's doing. You don't need to know a thing about crypto or how to invest. You simply do what he does. So let me tell you more about James. He runs the Crypto with James YouTube channel, which despite heavy censorship, something we're familiar with, has more than 26,000 members. Since March 2020, he's told his viewers to buy 26 crypto coins. Had you put $100 into each one, 
it would have gone on to be worth $123,000. Of the 26 coins, his top pick of the year, a coin called Phantom, went up 692 times from when he named it. That one call has retired a number of people, including guys in their 20s and 30s. And remember, this is public knowledge. You can go to YouTube and verify it yourself. So if you'd like to join the 2,800 members who copy James, then stop what you're doing and head over to copymycrypto.com slash Sam. That's copymycrypto.com slash Sam. That's S-A-M. You'll not only find proof of everything that Johnny said, but our listeners get full access for just $1, okay? Once again, that's copymycrypto.com slash Sam. The recession is here, guys. You can suffer with like everyone else or choose to thrive. James is a real deal. Go check out his site now. All right, let's get into it, man. Always one of my favorite people to talk on a podcast. We usually get into politics, but now we're going to get into a, a little financial discussion about what he's working and you know where he's going with his money. Please welcome to the show, Robbie, the fire, Bernstein. How are you, buddy? Hell yeah, dude. It's an honor to be on this thing. Always wanted to be part of the Cash Daddy's gang. Whoa, dude, you can come. Okay? We'll get rid of Howie. You're in, dude. You're in. Need to be on more, baby. You come in, take my spot, man. You won't look like <laughs> a fucking douchebag. Howie, do it. <laughs> Rob, Robbie, can you tell us your feelings on a 55-year-old man who's getting ready for a pickup game tonight? He's just warming up. Any thoughts on that? I was wondering if this was his bit where he just likes to pretend like he just came from the gym. Yeah. No, I'm going to the gym. I'm we're playing at the on the third floor tonight at uh I can't remember the fucking school, but it's going to be a battle. It's going to be hot. I'll I'll take ankle injury for 300. Yeah, for sure, dude. Are you guys on DraftKings? I'd love to fucking <laughs> no. I uh pay uh, make a bet on the other team. Robbie, uh you're on some great podcasts. Tell us all about your podcast real quick and where our listeners can find you. Oh, hell yeah. Run Your Mouth is my personal podcast. Do that about three days a week out of my living room, which is right here. Uh, you can find that YouTube everywhere. And then, of course, part of the problem on the days I don't do Run Your Mouth, which is uh, with Dave Smith on the Gas Digital Network. Well, that's awesome. Uh, Dave looks like he's doing amazing stuff. His birthday just made it to 40, which is amazing. Still a baby. <laughs> uh, but you guys are doing the Lord's work. You're booking yourself on the road. Where can they get your road gigs? Uh. Robbie the fire dot com. Robbie uh, the fire. No, Mr. Tripley. On fire. that note, what is the aging secret? Because you you look like a twenty two year old, buddy. I would I would have thought the elites would have poisoned your water by yeah, now. Yeah, they're what? coming for me today. <laughs> they're coming for me today. Uh, we talked about uh, dancing Israeli students in the nine eleven buildings, but we'll move on to that. We'll talk about that on Conspiracy Social Club. But uh, you know what it is: sobriety, dude, and sleeping. That's what that's my keys to uh, staying young. Uh, you know, you're Jewish. I'm proud to announce I just got my yellow belt in Krav Maga, bro. Ooh. Bang, bang. So you've learned how to really knee someone in the balls. Yeah, I know how to <laughs> dirty fucking fight. That's what I'm all about, dude. Uh, but Rob, uh, you're, you're, uh, we want to have you on because you're, you're, you know, you're looking to invest. You're a podcaster. You're, you're like me. You're, you make your money through podcasting. There's no real 401k. So, you know, I'm thinking about how am I going to have a retirement? Uh, what do you, what are your thoughts on all that? Well, um, it, wow. I really, uh, I feel put on the spot. I am responsible with my money. I try and, uh, save, you want to know what, like my, just my overall, like what, what are your thoughts strategy? on like being an independent contractor and, you know, not really like, I mean, uh, maybe you are, maybe you're, you're investing in social security and all that stuff. You're having taxes taken out of your checks and all that, but you know, I'm not, I'm not really doing, I mean, I pay taxes at the end of the year and I pay them the full amount because I don't fuck with the IRS. Right. But like, what are your whole thoughts on that? Uh, you got a step set up, right? You got a step IRA. Right? We were talking. Yeah, about I do, it. and I got as soon as I get done. My because in California we were able to move back our taxes, paying our taxes for some reason. So um, now that the, my move's done, I'm going to be able to pay off that, and then I'll go down and put some more money in my uh, IRA. But you know, Rob got one too. Wait, Rob, you got a set up? Because I know we were yeah. talking about it. So I, here's the thing about being a W-9. I'm a lazy person. It's a lot easier if someone just hands you a check and you don't have to worry about anything. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. that's just easier. I've worked those jobs. That's great. I don't have to worry. I don't have to keep records. I find the most annoying part about being a W-9 employee is 
and you probably have this too. If I'm producing a comedy show and I paid someone out 50 bucks, I, I don't want to have to get their information to then have to send them forms. Like that's where it really gets annoying. If anything is I start feeling bad when I have to pay people out and I have to get their information to report to the tax man. That's where I feel like I'm a, a part of the whole system. The upside of being a W9 employee, if you're people like us, especially me, as I'm still trying to build a comedy career, is I'm able to tour and deduct against my podcast income um, because, you know, every time everything I do on the road, I deduct. Um, also, all the investments I've made, like in this space right here, I got a pretty nice studio out of my apartment. Um, so one of the strategies I take is really investing in yourself if you're a W-9 employee and being aggressive just in terms of the deductions that you make. And then how we mentioned the SEP IRAs, but the other thing you want to do is just maximize anything that has a tax benefit, um, which includes your HSA plan, your SEP IRA. Those are the only two that really come to mind. But then it's like off the bat, you know, even if you lose money in the market, you, you came in 30, you know, 30 to 40 percent ahead. Well, yeah, or a Roth IRA. I mean, you know, any of those. But you, and, and people got to remember something. You don't need to invest in the stock market within your IRA. I mean, right now with interest rates so high, you can buy a two-year treasury uh, or keep your money in the money market and still get four and a half, five percent So what's the advantage at that point of being in a treasury and locking it up versus just sitting money market? doesn't seem like there's a great spread of actually locking up your money in bonds versus just sitting like in a high yield savings account. No, I mean, you can, you don't have to lock it up. You can sell those bonds anytime you want. I mean, yeah, but if the interest rate goes up, you're going to be taking a loss on the bonds versus if you're sitting in a high yield savings account, you know, you just take it right out. You don't take any loss or a high yield money market. But I mean, you know, a lot of times people will buy treasuries because right now the interest rate is extremely high. So what happens if rates drop? Those bonds are going to go up. You're actually going to you're going to have an appreciation in the actual bonds. It's so, funny. It's it's funny to hear someone say, "What are we at? Maybe four percent rates." I'm guessing. I haven't looked, but four, four to four and a half. Five. It's it's hilarious to hear someone describe that as incredibly high. Like from a historic perspective, that's still like I would say seven percent should be the standard. It usually well it had been for 30, 40 years, but of course yeah. you know. 90s, 2000s rates went way, they never should have been as low as they were. I mean, that that's a real problem. Um, they're going to go, <laughs> they're, they're actually going to go higher. They're going to raise them again. I love these ass clowns on CNBC that say, no, nah, maybe they're done. No, they're not done. They're going to raise them a little bit higher. Uh, the only good thing today was consumer sentiment came out and, the, and it was bad. I mean, people, the confidence number was low, which in turn made the market go down. Uh, so it wouldn't surprise me if we have more of a sell-off, even though earnings came out today and fucking Microsoft and Google, uh, Chipotle, they have pretty good earnings. Not bad. Chipotle will always have good earnings because it's for fat people and it's awesome. <laughs> uh, isn't good earnings though, so much just reflective of higher inflation. So like of the two indicators you just mentioned, uh, you know, consumer spending is like, I think they say the only leading indicator, but if you're just talking about like higher corporate profits, that would probably just be reflective of inflation. Ah, not necessarily. I mean, I mean, corporate profits over the past year, uh, they, they've dropped quite a bit and it's been factored in. I mean, these guys will come out and they're not great now. They're not great, but at least they're hitting that level bottom line number going forward. So that's really all the market wants to hear. I mean, what the market doesn't want to hear is uh, who was it yesterday uh, or this morning? UPS came out. All right. And that's a big indicator. When you see companies like UPS and FedEx and they come out and they say, man, shipping is down. Uh, we're getting our asses handed to us right now. Earnings aren't good. We don't foresee them probably till the second or third quarter improving. What's that tell you? That tells you people are saving money. They're not Buying shipping. drugs locally. Yes, that's exactly what it means. So that's like, no, he's right. I mean, that's that's people just aren't sending spending money to send shit. They're they're actually hungry. one thing that blows my mind is that we import crystal meth. Like we used to make meth here in America <laughs> in our own bathtubs, and now we're now we have to outsource crystal meth. I mean, what kind of fucking country do we live in where we have to fucking outsource our own bathtub meth, bro? Where's Where that coming from? It's got uh, Mexico cartels. 
wouldn't it be that be great if that was actually the greatest jobs indicator was whether or not we were manufacturing our own crystal meth? Crystal meth I mean, is up, guys. Crystal meth production is up, guys. The economy <laughs> is doing great under Biden. Yeah, I mean, somebody in like fucking Southwest Georgia starts their own cocoa fields. I mean, that would be like, yeah, we got some high grade uh, cocaine. You get look stick domestic, and they had like a, they they sell it in yeah, bags. Made in the USA. That'd be so <laughs> hilarious. So, in Johnny, US. wasn't there a story that there is a some kind of company had a deal? with the CIA that they could legally import cocaine Coca-Cola. Yeah. No, I believe I actually think it goes a little bit further than that. Mr. Uh, Mr. Johnny, you can look this one up. Mr. But... Johnny. I love <laughs> yeah, that's that. A first, yeah. <laughs> I he believe that uh, any cocaine that's imported to the United States might be done through Coca-Cola. It's so, like, even if like the United States wanted to run like a uh, study with like, I, I might be totally off on this. Like, I don't remember where I heard. Hey, this dude, one. you're on cash as you're, you, that doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. So I, I think that like any, I, I think they're the only people that are legally allowed to import cocaine into the country. And it's like, even if they're doing a medical study, it then gets purchased through Coca-Cola. I think, I think you're right. I think that is correct. I'm almost positive. That's correct. Coca-Cola is the only company that, that can do that. Uh, yeah, they do. Yeah. They import the leaves into a Maywood based facility. Uh, and Seriously. I'm just trying to read this here. Uh, it's unclear how much coca leaves the staff. In, oh, that's great. They'd have no idea how much they import annually. Although the New York Times reported in 1988 that it bought between 56 and 500. Listen to this spread. The, the, the New York Times reported in 1988 that it brought in between 56 and 588 metric tons of coca leaves from Purdue and Bolivia. So, you know, either 58 or 588. I have no idea. I think you're probably right. Yeah. <laughs> Also, oh. with uh, with artificial flavoring and all the chemicals in Coca Cola, do you really think they need that cocoa leaf for that flavor? Like, you really yeah. don't think they figured out how to make that without some coke actual cocoa leaves? Right. And it what's hilarious, bro, is that they actually took cocaine out of soda, out of their, out of their soda because they wanted something more addictive in it, which was sugar. That's wild, right? Isn't that crazy? Like, sugar is like sugar's like one molecule away from cocaine they're like very very similar yeah, but sugar is more addicted than cocaine that's that's the whole point they they didn't they didn't take out coke because they were like oh what about the people they're like oh no we can get them even more addicted by putting this other white substance in which was sugar wow that's crazy, that's amazing, right I wonder how much of that cocoa that comes in uh like disappears around christmas like you know the, <laughs> the ceo's got to say look we got a board meeting look you were my you're my five biggest guys here uh uh jane bring out a box everybody gets a box yeah christmas. everybody gets a box bro it's everybody so gets funny they they apparently got some press about this and they have stories like both the company that imports them and the fbi saying that we basically need to kill these news stories and kind of keep this under wraps so they were for <laughs> sure up to something yeah. No, I yeah, cannot yeah. believe the FBI would do that, Johnny. Yeah, that's yeah, blasphemy. Really. They would but never... I mean, these are these are these are things that are in the National Archives from like the 50s and 60s letters that they were passing back and forth, saying, "Hey, we need fewer articles like this in the press. It would be better for the public." Is their exact quote here? Isn't that funny? Coca Cola is one of the top performing stocks over the past year. You know, Coca Cola, Pepsi ripped earnings last night. They're up, and of course, you know, probably the best performing stock over the past few years. I think it went up the last 21 out of 24 days is McDonald's just ripping, just ripping. So, you know, all this shit about this country getting back on tra track with a good health record. Fuck that. <laughs> People just let it rip. People are drinking Budweiser, eating Big Macs, fucking with uh -huh. no condoms. This is, it's, you know, we're back to the 70s, which I kind of like a little bit. Yeah, but the chemical makeup of the food is way worse than back in the 70s. They put more crap in there that makes you fatter and fatter. They make you work more and more. So you're uh you're you're working out less and less. So it's like super interesting. But back to Robbie. Ro Ro go on. Who was it? someone said something? Okay. Nope. Robbie, talk to me about what you like in investing in. Are you are you a stock guy? Are you precious metals? Are you buying guns? What are you buying? What are you buying? 
Holocaust artifacts. What are you buying? <laughs> well, if you can get your hands on Holocaust artifacts, the rare to stock up. Absolutely. That is the move. You nailed it there. Um, no. So, you know, I, I, firstly, I'm not that sophisticated with my cash. I don't touch the stock market. I think that thing's a giant bubble. I think it's coming back down to the 2000s. That's what I think. I think at some point the Fed's going to stop with their QEs, with their buying of their bonds, and you're going to see it. I know how he's shaking his head and he's going, you got to be in stocks. Uh, here's what I do with my money. We're short stocks now, Robbie. My what? guys on the Patreon, we've been for the last month. Yeah, we've been shorting. We've been short the whole market, man. SQQQ, I've been saying it every week, and fucking thing was ripping today up 5%. Hell yeah. No, I like uh, every paycheck. I like to put about uh, 5% into Bitcoin. Um, I, I need to start doing the same with gold. Uh, whatever cash I got, I, I, I park exactly what I need for taxes into a high yield savings account so that I have it at the end of the year. Uh, and then sometimes uh, with the other stuff, I got good, good, good Jew connections that I managed to get like into the lending business of what usually would only be like offered to private equity people. Thank you for your honesty. Well, <laughs> you, the, when you, when you divide your funds up like that, when you get them, do you have an automated service for that? Or are you just manually going out and pulling out the taxes into the savings? Uh, what? No, I mean, I just, I you just do it yourself over. It's not that okay. difficult. Yeah, no, I, I, I also, I, I, I know that they have some services for that, uh, you know, that will calculate it like to the cent what you right. need. I don't know if you're using one. No, I'm not that sophisticated. Just every once in a while, I take some Adderall. I actually sit down. I open up a spreadsheet and I move some money around. So when you say, when you say yeah. you, you're in with a few Jews that, uh, are, 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 are this is, this is what I think we're talking about because why I, I did a deal a few years ago or attempted to do a deal. It failed. Uh, but we were looking to buy like 11 large uh, residential apartment buildings in Brooklyn. Right. And the dude from Israel that came over and bought him, he got leveraged so beyond bad. I, I'm right. talking about, we sat down with him and we were like, dude, you owe like fucking 22 million. Like, how where are you right. going to come up with this? And he said, don't worry about it. I got an extra 90 days because this crew down the street, these Hasidic fellas had loaned him $22 million with like a fucking 38% VIG. Like, right. I was like, dude, you, here's a calculator. Can you figure out what you're going to need to pay back? <laughs> so long story short, we were like, is there a way we can sit down with these guys? Cause they're, you're never going to pay them. That's right. not going to happen. Uh, long story short, we tried every which way to buy these buildings from him. He just, he left the country. We, I mean, just bolted, man. Uh, but this was basically the Hasidic mafia over in, uh, over in Park Slope, Williamsburg. These were not nice people. These right. were bad fucking dudes with big hats on. Right. They, some of them had Uzis under Which their hats were they? Were they the hockey pucks hats? <laughs> or... Dude, or the these, like elk lodge hats these dudes walked around and he, he warned us he said these guys are always packing they're starting to threaten me a little bit we called him a week later phone disconnected everything he was gone bye bye or dead uh, or dead yeah you know that's a good point never really thought about it he's probably he's dead. dead you know yeah. you don't fuck with any mob i don't care no, who it is. these guys were bad and so then we, we got in touch with one of them because they went into the one place. His his main office had all kinds of expensive wine and everything. And we tried to take the wine. Hell yeah. Uh, and and the, the dudes, these dudes were like, no, don't touch, don't touch. <laughs> so what did we do afterwards? We had all the numbers for the banks that he had the original loans on. Uh, we went and we tried to do every single deal we could, but the fucking properties were so upside down. It was just, they're still sitting there. They're still sitting there with ropes around. And, and at some point the banks will have to give them away. So, um, so are we talking, are those the kind of, uh, Hebrews? That <laughs> dealing with? No, I, I wish I had that kind of access. I'm not that involved in the community. Uh, but no, I got a, I got a family accountant and I, I, he calls me up sometimes. I'm like, Hey, we're funding this. Do you, what do you want to put in? And I'll just look at what I have and throw some funding, money at him. Funding what? what um, so like one time, the last one was like an old age home in Pennsylvania. Uh, prior to that, it was, um, uh, storage facilities in, uh, I think it was in, in Vermont. 
Uh, but more often than not, I don't I don't do a lot of homework on it because I really trust the accountant and like I'll spread it amongst like the different investments. So like I'm mm-hmm. never I'm never like too far in on anything. And like I'll get access to something that usually an investor could only do with like probably like a hundred thousand dollars and I'll just throw five thousand dollars in and they just kind of like because the accountant's willing to do the math and actually like you know process my payouts so you got you you have your your hands in a, a smaller scale private equity deal that's awesome yeah basically so i would say like all of my bigger investments are that but i don't even track them i don't know i i couldn't even tell you for all i know my accountant's just taking all my money now you're probably getting fucking ass drilled and not even yeah. know here you go good luck with that storage, <laughs> that storage facility in uh burlington vermont yeah probably- exactly it's probably a barn with a couple cows in it. Yeah, I bet if I took the if I actually took a drive up there, I'd realize, man, I, I got mixed up with the wrong Jews. And then you make a call and you find out actually was those hostages all along. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, it's like Tom Cruise has an accountant, then he has an accountant that checks out the accountant. That's <laughs> the way to do it. I mean, if you're yeah. Tom Cruise pulling in that kind of money, you don't want to mess around. Yeah, yeah you gotta true. rotate your your accountants. And yeah, just but more more importantly, your financial advisors, man. I mean, the accountants. I mean, you can check and it, it, at least have somebody back it up and see if he's fucking fake sending you fake uh, statements. But the financial advisors, you need to have like ten or twenty of them. Did you ever? Uh, the craziest story I ever heard, and Mr. Johnny, you can fact check this one also. Mr. Johnny, <laughs> I love that. But That's they important. say uh, they say that Steve Harvey. I mean, this is the worst scam I ever heard was the accountants were preparing his taxes for him and then they were just cashing the checks. And then he ended up like in this multi-million dollar hole to the IRS because he never paid taxes like over the course of five years. Well, I, I, I don't I what I'm seeing here right away is that my accountant died. I owed twenty two million dollars in taxes. So I, I don't let me see. Uh he did owe at some point twenty two million dollars to the IRS. Oh, yeah, he, he was he was paying his accountants, and they were just pocketing the. the well, the, no, the he, here, here, here's his quote. It's not quite, according to him, anyway. It's not quite that. My he might be lying though. He would have reason to if he got duped. My accountant died, and an accountant that worked for him called my lawyer and said, "We have a problem. She found on the floor all of my tax forms for seven years, signed with checks stapled to them." Oh, geez. I mean, this does sound like the kind of thing you make up, though, if you didn't pay taxes for seven years. You know what I mean? Like, my accountant right. died. I, who knows what? Hold on. <laughs> dead for seven years? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, like you that, never, that never talked like, to him? It doesn't make any sense, right? Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Harvey <laughs> added, they were cashing the checks, keeping the money, and not turning in the tax forms. They didn't, wait, they didn't cash it. They took money out of the account that matched the exact number. Oh, that's oh, I see. Okay, so the check yeah, they went and found, they found the checks and then took money out of. I, I guess they took money out of his account matching the checks, so they never actually cashed the checks. Well, isn't that along the lines of what that Murdoch murderer guy did? Like he set up. There was supposedly what Who is knows it? That guy? The company that pays out like lawsuits. Chrono, I don't know what the name is. is it Chronos or something like that. He created a fake company named Chrono. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Right yeah, to withdraw. It. It's like crazy, dude. It's crazy. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like it's and like when just, you're paying your rent, you know, and you just like miss it. You pay 157 instead of 1570, you know, and you're like, oh, I'm sorry, I just misplaced the zero. It's like it's one of those old. <laughs> and apparently the uh, the Murdoch check thing was working, and he just killed his wife for sport. <laughs> Well, I think you're right. I mean, it's that's nothing funny about it, but we can all understand. I mean, it happens. You know, <laughs> we, all, we, all, we all get those feelings. You get those feelings. You just, you know, you gotta, you gotta shut it down. Just can't do it. So I don't know, but uh, yeah, this is interesting. There's a lot of wild shit in the news right now, Rob. I mean, what did you think about the whole? Uh, I mean, Tucker, Tucker Carlson. That's one of your guys, right? What did you think about that poor guy going down? Well, I wouldn't say poor guy going down. I think uh, he's made a fortune and he'll probably be able to pick up right back up and go somewhere else. Um, firstly, he's got a million hours, he's, that guy's got millions since he was in kindergarten. So let's just. Oh, yeah. Uh, call uh, what a, he calls I, money. I never watched Tucker Carlson, but now that he's got fi- got him fired and I'm seeing some of the clips of like recent stuff he's done. I was like, wow, this guy was actually pretty on point. I'm guessing he was fired for uh, for one or two reasons, or at least this is what I'm seeing. 
I, I think that there's a good chance that he cost them the lawsuit. And he was actually right. He basically emailed the executives and said, hey, this, what you guys are doing with this Dominion stuff is absolutely crazy. Um, it, he like, and since that was in writing, I, we don't know what actually happened in the Dominion lawsuit. And we can talk about that in a moment. But I think part of the reason why Fox didn't even move forward and try and fight it was in part because of what was in writing from Tucker Carlson to some of the executives. Yeah. Uh, and so I think Murdoch basically turned around and was like, yeah, you just cost us $975 million. I'm letting you go. Yeah. Now, and it's not like they don't have a history of firing the number one guy in the time slot. Cause they did the same thing to O'Reilly uh, over yeah, but like O'Reilly, a $77 million lawsuit. O'Reilly was finger banging chicks. So. Right. O'Reilly. Yeah, but they could have stood by him. They could have stood by uh, him. If they not in the, not in the new market. It's that Fox been news, a... man. His ratings were at the, the lawsuit was public for weeks and he, his ratings were just, I mean, solid as hell. It's, I mean, I know it's the advertising, but his, apparently his advertising wasn't down either. Although they're trying to spin this now to say that Tucker, the the win for Fox is not going to be in ratings, but in advertising. And I'm just like, come on, I don't believe it. Well, what's oh. incredible is they got rid of their number one talent and they got rid of him for being for, supposedly if it's true that it's uh, over the lawsuit. He was right. He went to the executives and he said, guys, this reporting is irresponsible and you're going to cost us our integrity. And then he was proved right, and then they dropped him for both being right while he's at the top of his game. Well, so, no, they what the what the it's all a, a shell game, dude. It's right. all shell game. What they're what they're saying is the the lawsuit basically is predicated on that he believed one thing and was saying another thing, meaning he 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 was saying that the election was rigged when he really didn't do it, which defamed uh, the, the uh, Dominion. Okay, even though. We can get into it. Uh, Elizabeth Warren and all these Democrats talking about how Dominion's uh, 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 systems could be hackable. But nobody wants to talk about that. So but the the, the lawsuit is basically that they 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 uh, smeared Dominion by state by saying one thing while really believing another thing. That's the essence. Right. But now this. Here, here's what's so tricky to me about the Dominion lawsuit. And to me, it's a shame that it didn't actually go to trial. And it must be that Fox saw, knew that behind the scenes, it would have been worse for them. But if you're Fox News and the president or the president's lawyer is saying something, doesn't matter how fake, fictional or whatever it is, it's your job to report it because if it's coming out of the president or it's coming out of the president's lawyer's mouth, that's now news. Right. So like literally you could have Trump getting up and saying, hey, uh, we've got rapist Mexicans roaming California and we have to get all Mexicans out of the country. So you might not want to confirm the fact that there's rapist Mexicans, but you can report the fact, hey, Trump is making the following claim. Now, Fox News is a pretty big enterprise. I don't watch it. I don't know what they were saying, but they'd be really stupid to have categorized any of the reporting other than, hey, here's what Donald Trump is reporting. And then you can have a field day with that. I mean, you could spend you can do hours of programming on here is what is being reported by this other individual. Here is what this lawyer is claiming. So I don't know how they don't have a good enough legal team to have just kind of characterized or, or, it or, in that way. Or Robbie. Yeah. The amount of money lost sounds like a lot to everybody. Oh, but to them it just doesn't matter. Brazilians and trillions of dollars or billions and billions and billions of dollars. Right. And you want to you want to set precedents which is if anyone questions our elections, we're going to sue you into hell. And, and they want to paint anybody who questions the results of elections, even though our eyeballs tell us another thing, but they want they, you to be, basically everything has been making people scared to question authority. And this right, is just so, a giant lawsuit that does that. Right. So that that's the argument that the Dominion is a, um, it's kind of like the Alex Jones thing where it appears more to be, a new form of censorship. Yes. And, and and so I agree with you. That's where it looks very scary because it's like a news organization can factually report a claim that Donald Trump is making. This feels like censorship if you're then going to be sued hundreds of millions of dollars for doing so, Um, which is why it's odd to me that this was just settled without even in a lawsuit, which means they must have had something worse behind the scenes. It's something we don't know. That's what I, that's yeah. what it looked like. And yeah. it happened quickly. It happened like I it looked kind of looks like someone made a decision in 30 minutes and said just that's it. He's done. Yeah, yeah, Howie. It's almost like something was about to come up, you know, that they, they were like, hey, we you know, this is well, what's gonna come is, up at trial. It seems like the judge signaled to them that uh I'm not saying he was a dirty judge, but that he wasn't 
Yeah. He wasn't being lenient with Fox because he busted them on what seemed like something that you wouldn't disclose. If you were a good lawyer, you would not have given over. And then they got in big time trouble with the judge where the judge was like, this is uh, unexcusable that this wasn't given over to the other side. Now, I'm not a lawyer. I didn't read all the details, but sometimes like you just see that signal of, oh, this judge is kind of signaling to Fox that he's going to be giving them a hard time. And then it was the day later that Fox settled it. Yeah, it was wild, man. I mean, wild. So, I mean, going forward, who the hell know, who knows what I, I love the fact both of these news channels like no we're we're trying to do a better job with rec- uh talking about the news accurately it's like get the fuck yeah. out of here no, no it's just it's all stupid dude all of yeah. it's theater and it's all funny money i'm you know and it's just like we discussed this earlier about dominion energy versus dominion voting systems and how everybody's uh, mistaking the two and at the end of the day it's like it's just the everybody gets bailed out at some point by this fucking Federal Reserve bailouts that they all fucking do. And it's all I, like you brought up Alex Jones. It's like nobody actually looks at any of that stuff and they just they have an emotional response to it. You had a you had a, a activist judge who like it basically is like I support current things. I mean, every single psyop that's been thrown out, she has had some kind of had it in her Twitter bio at some point, whether it was the Ukraine or or um or any of that stuff. They basically uh, you know, Ukraine, COVID, vaccines, trans, you name it. She somehow virtual signal it. So that's my whole opinion is like right. you're seeing activists right now, activist judges, which is very dangerous to set these precedents on censorship. You have the meme guy going to jail 10 years because the government has convinced everybody that uh, a guy putting out a meme, okay, uh, could get people not to vote. Right. That, I mean, and it's like it's insane that this guy could be going to jail for this for 10 years for putting out a meme going text here, you know, to uh, vote. The uh, the Jones case was scary because the judgment was made that he was guilty before he ever walked into a courtroom and was before juries. Right. It was determined that he was guilty, just not the amount that he was going to be guilty for. Uh, and then also it was because like of the impact of his words. But then, of course, it's not like CNN's in trouble for repeating what he said. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like he made a statement and he's not just responsible for his listenership. He's actually responsible for every single person that rebroadcasted what he said. Makes sense. Yeah, that, that, that's ridiculous. But another there's another guy who's attorney, by the way. It was just I mean, like fucking Alex Jones attorney buried him. <laughs> But um, by the way, speaking to uh to Johnny's point, it could be that you know Murdoch got a call from uh Boeing and Pfizer and said, "Hey, here's here's what we're willing to spend with you next year if you drop Tucker Carlson." Uh, hey. it, it, that could be. And mm-hmm. he said, "You know what? I would like to have that paycheck. We're dropping Tucker. Could be." I, you make good that now that I believe that because that's what happens in Wall Street every single goddamn day. I mean, when you see a stock get an upgrade from uh, uh, a sell to an outperform or an outperform to a strong buy, and you're like, wow, they must really have their shit together. That company's doing great. Look, they just up- got upgraded by Goldman or Morgan Stanley. We need to buy them. You don't know what analyst upgraded that particular stock, went out to dinner the night before and got a fucking big shoebox in a bag and went home. You don't know what that, because that's what used to happen. That that happened all through the 90s, man. When you saw WorldCom, are you shitting me, or Enron getting upgraded to a strong buy and institutions were bu- putting billions of dollars into these companies all because one analyst upgraded it and said, wow, man, Bernie Ebers really has WorldComs on all eight cylinders. He's doing an amazing job, even though the company was worth nothing. But – how much money do you think that analyst got? Enough to fucking retire, baby. I mean, that's that's what you're saying could make sense. I I, I totally agree. That's the shit that used to happen, man. Speaking about Twitter, what do you think of this, Robbie? Because this is this isn't your line of business. You you I mean, and, and Sam, you too. Uh Elon Musk came out, I think it was yesterday, and he said basically the blue check marks 
you you people that are paying, you get taken care of first. Where's that man? Freedom of speech went right out the fucking window on that one. <laughs> I got to be honest. I haven't followed the blue check marker deal at all. I don't know. I don't know the features that come with it. I don't know what it costs. Right. I just, yeah. But you pay, you pay, everyone pays monthly. And, and, and basically Musk came out yesterday and he said that he said, all my blue check markers that you get first priority, you get taken care of. What does that and mean, that, taking care of? Like your your tweets get more visibility, or what? Is, like they do, yeah. I mean, that's absolutely a fact. Yeah, that they give them prioritization in the in the algorithm. But I, I I think he was also talking about like support, customer support, and a number of things. Yeah. Okay. I mean, in terms of customer support, that that doesn't bother me if you're actually uh, paying customer the service, and I guess there's features right. that doesn't bother me. Um, I guess priority within the algorithm, if you're spending money to be there or not does just make the platform lamer. I, I kind of saw that with Facebook years ago when I was putting out Rob's newsroom, um, which was like a little sketch, you know, show I was doing. Originally, when I was putting it out there, like we were getting pretty decent views. And then it kind of changed where like they had the promotional feature. And then it basically just changed where you had to basically buy the impressions, which is a way of almost getting the, these companies almost grifting off of people who are trying to create content. Uh, cause you know, you got to basically pay to get the people to get the, like, it's, I, I, I don't know that I don't love, but I don't know enough of the details to really, you know, give you a firm opinion. Gotcha. Yeah. I thought it was wild, man. I mean, that's like, holy shit. So, uh, it's, it's like, it's not really freedom of speech. You got to kind of pay a little bit to get, to get more freedom, which uh, I don't know. Yeah. I guess that punishes the poor. I guess that's a fair point is that anyone that can't afford the, uh, the eight bucks doesn't have that much speech. Yeah, I mean that that's an interesting point. And he did take certain people and just gave them a blue check mark. He gave Stephen King, a couple other guys, said, "Here, you get one." Yeah, it was, one. it was Stephen King, Shatner, William Shatner, and LeBron James. Yeah, yeah, you those get with one. the three he paid for. <laughs> so you know, I mean, a lot of people personally, I don't give a shit, but I just thought it was interesting that this free speech platform it's a shit time. show. Let's, I mean, Twitter's a shit show right now. The business of Twitter is just a mess. Like, are you seeing the ads that are on Twitter now, Howie? I keep getting ads for this thing that removes hooks from fish's mouths over and over <laughs> again. Over and over again. Yeah, how much money are those people spending? That's, that's, that's what I'm thinking. Right, the, yeah. The ads, the ads I see on Twitter remind me of, like, 1990s internet where – you're like, yeah, uh, someone's yeah. going to have to, if yeah. you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. we'll make your, you can have a foot long tree trunk penis. If you take our medications, <laughs> Dude, I got, it's like, I got if a... you fall asleep watching the local cable news channel, you know, like the, the, the cable access channel. And then you wake up during the ads in the middle of the night. That's the kind of shit. It's just crazy shit. I got there, there's this, the there's this mat. There's this mat. That's an optical illusion. That looks like a hole in the ground. And it's just dogs. Like there's and I dogs, like being tripped out by this mat this Chinese mat that they're trying to sell. I see that all the time. I see this guy who's in a Chinese factory with these really shitty plastic airplanes that you throw in the air over and over again. I mean, it's just yeah, the worst ads dude. on Twitter. I love those planes. I got one. I got one the other night. It was like, do you have extremely small breasts? Do you not even have cleavage? Well, this fucking new bras for the itty bitty titty committee. This was on Twitter. And I'm like, why am I? So I would fun. never ask for small bra. I think it's. I think. I think tits. if we've learned one thing from this, yeah. it's time for us to. Uh, it's time for us to advertise on Twitter, Cash Daddy. So let's do well, it. Well, you know, real quick, I, I don't know. What, are we talking about the blue check mark and everybody losing their fucking yeah. skulls? It's. Well, a, no, I'm getting people, and I'm gonna talk about this tonight on uh, on uh, Broken Sim when we record. But you know, it's it, it's crazy to me to watch all these people. Like you just, it's like the herd mentality of stupid. Like I see these people on the left. They're so excited about Tucker getting off Fox. They don't even understand what's going on. here. You have the only guy, regardless of whether he's controlled opposition or not, talking about the fucking lies of the Ukrainian war, the fucking pharmaceutical companies lying to you about what their vaccine does. And he's now been deplatformed off of the mainstream. And, and the left is celebrating this. Now they're upset about $8, $8 for a blue check mark. They're upset about it when they didn't even realize that their blue check mark was being put on bots to, to astroturf them into be believing in cancel culture. 
It's so crazy. The only reason I have a blue check mark is because I need to edit my tweets. It's the only platform that you have to pay to edit your fucking posts. It fucking sucks, but I need to do it. And the fact that they think now if you have a blue check mark, you're a fucking like what elitist piece of shit stuff that's going on with that. The way they're like, oh, now everybody can have a blue check mark. What, like, how elitist are you right now that you fucking act like that? That you're like, I would see these people, like, I would see these people have, like, oh, he's the uh, editor for bing bop 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 beep bop politics.com, and he has 400,000 fucking Twitter followers. Nobody's ever heard of this website, but somehow he has 400,000 Twitter followers. That the equivalent of my friends who are doing theaters right now, like fucking like Tom Segura or Burt Kreischer, that you have the same number Twitter followers as those guys. Get the fuck out of here. So I don't know if that I'm I'm gelling with what you guys are saying, but it just amazes me at how and now you got all these people running around going, oh, blue check marks are stupid. They were always stupid. Yeah, they but I don't think it's just the left, Sam. I think it's not just the left. I think a lot of people on both sides were pissed off about it. No, I mean, the people I see going nuts are the left. That's oh, what I okay. see. I, I have no see idea. Left. And it's so funny because, you know, I I forgot who this dumb fuck who's a Twitterer, who's a, he's from the left, talking about how everybody's losing their mind on the right about Tucker. I go, and how the left doesn't care about Don Lemon. No, you care about people spending eight dollars on a fucking blue check mark i hate it i wish i didn't have to do it but i have to do it for editing but the, the blue check mark is the dumbest thing in the fucking world you had a bunch of fucking i saw people with like 300 followers with a blue check mark it's, well, it, I, I mean it made sense if they stuck to what it was supposed to be but they played favorites with it originally it was meant to say this person works at this institution they're not a fake they're that person, uh, you know, and they work, you know, it, ma it made it so that you could trust what they reported. It was mostly for news and celebrities like that, but they played favorites with it. They played politics and they ruined it. And now the thing that Elon's doing, it, what he should be doing is tying it somehow to actual verification. But instead, he made it so patently a money grab. You know what I mean? It's so clearly a money grab now instead of. Like if he had actually, he should change the name. It's not verification anymore. There's nothing being verified. At no, least I'm like what Facebook, that. what Meta is doing. And I, you know, I'm not saying this is good. I, I don't, I don't know how I feel about it. But Meta is going to eventually tie it to your ID. So you have to show them your ID to get verified, which at least that is a verification of sorts. Yeah, this is just Elon go. taking it eight bucks. Into, uh, you know, social credit score, which I think is already right. here. You know, right, but you know, you on. argue, Sam, though, for people using their real names on social media. And this is like, I mean, that's, this I is get how it, man, because a lot of the trolling would go away very instantly. And as a guy who finally got back his Twitter with his name, I've always put my name on my shit, but I, I have heard people complain that this is social credit score. And you know what? They're probably fucking right. Yeah. They're probably right. And so anybody, I don't really know what the answer is. Anybody um, can take your name and fuck you over like that cocksucker, how we do it. <laughs> Fucking nobody, nobody knows it. Look, that guy just absolutely just added an ETT to be cool. I, when I saw that, I was like, wow, this guy looks a lot like how we do. He. Yeah, it couldn't be I didn't more actually funny. Feel I didn't it couldn't be that more that funny. Actually, a picture of you. You he looks like your gay oh, no, twin brother, him. Howie. Like him. you pound all the puss and he's just a giant <laughs> puss. I hope I run into him. I hope I run into that guy someday. How we you do know? it? Yeah. <laughs> Fucking coon hunting in East Vermont, wherever he's from. No, but you're right, Johnny, about the original, what it was originally meant for. But what we're finding out right now is that basically, like, I'm sorry, but they're fine. Like, what's the number? Like, 60% of the internet isn't even real. Yeah. Like, so much of this isn't even real. So I would watch these guys on Twitter who couldn't put an ass in a seat to save their life when they sold a ticket suddenly get, like, 5,000 likes and 1,500 retweets and given the illusion of that what they're saying is resonating with people when in reality the algorithms were already fucking with us and, and making you think that like this small group of people on the fringe on the fringe left were powerful enough to cancel somebody. In reality, they weren't. There was just giant astroturfing going on 
from corporate America to make this small group of non-binary blue haired people seem like fucking annihilators. And it just wasn't true. So the whole thing was fucking fake from the start. It's just like, the, and this is my whole thing with social media. It's just like, man, if, if, if I didn't have shows like this and, and conspiracy social club, I don't see any reason to be on Twitter. It's just, it's just a cesspool of astroturfing, which causes divide and conquer. I can't fucking stand it. And it's just, everybody's yellow yelling into their el into their algorithm and their echo chamber. Like the fact that most of our friends haven't read anything about the Twitter files, haven't read anything about the, the uh, Pfizer dumps, haven't read anything about the Pentagon leaks, which I think were done on purpose, but don't know any of that stuff and are just instead celebrating fucking uh, Tucker Carlson getting killed. It's like, what hope is there? I'll tell you what hope is, is to pull out from all of it. That's really where I'm at. It's like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm ready to get out. I'm like, I think this is all spiritual loose jacking bullshit. I'm sorry. That's where I am right now. So I'm going to buy my gold, buy my guns, Buy my lands, grow crops, get people pregnant. That's what I'm doing, dog. That's where I live right now. That's my Fuck yeah, Sam, Sam Tripley lifestyle. I got to get in on this, man. We yeah. don't hang out enough. Yeah, That's the way dude. to do it. Dude, I've been wanting to own farmable land since high school. I just haven't executed on it. But look, I got, dude, oh, I, I didn't mention this investment. I got two closets in my apartment. One is filled to the brim with food that lasts 25 years. Respect, bro. I'm I, all I, about I, that. I got a year's supply, man. I have, have that my have my garage right now. I bought it because I thought the world was coming to an end. Me too. And then I wonder if that's a psyop as well. You know, <laughs> like how much of this, how deep does this shit fucking go? What is real? Who fucking knows? Who knows? Robbie, I'd like to go on. I would I would pay just to be in your mind for ten minutes. Just ten minutes in your mind. That would be Better that would be like, my pants. That would be like going to a fucking museum. <laughs> It would be like going to a museum. You would just be like, wow, whoa, oh, <laughs> shit. Gee, God damn. That would well, be you a know, so it's it's super interesting because as I start in a conspiracy theory, as I started as conspiracy theories, and I slowly became more and more spiritual, I start to come back around that none of this shit's real. And But then I wondered, like, did I go on this Bilbo Baggins journey to, like, get to the same place where all my friends are like, dude, it's so stupid. It's all bullshit. You're like, but you you think that for all the wrong reasons. You're ignoring what is going on. I do believe that there's manifestation and they're trying to get us to buy into shit and culture's bullshit and all that. I don't know, man. Uh, it's, it's just an interesting time to be alive. That's all I think. Yeah. I mean, the, the whole internet and social media thing is just... It's changed everything, man. I mean, you imagine being a kid today trying to grow up with this shit. I, I'm, I'm, I mean, dude, I'm very nervous what the algorithm's going to do to my children. I mean, just it's um, there's nothing yeah. good. Ninety five percent of the stuff you see on anything on the internet is not good. It's not good. Yeah, it doesn't, yeah. It doesn't help you develop as a person, become a better person. Uh, I, I mean, you know, I think a lot of it is related to what Johnny was talking about, how Generation Z, what do they do? Johnny want to work a two, two day, two hour day on Monday to ease themselves into the work week. Yeah. And then there was this story I shared with you guys. OK, here it is. Uh, the new nine to five starts at 6 p.m. for many Gen Zers and millennials. And they, they will walk out on employers who don't accommodate their schedule is what they're saying. You, I mean, people holy. wanting to work from home. You know, Elon got a lot of shit from that for laying off all the guys that that insisted that they were going to keep working from home. He's like, all right, well, you just don't work here anymore. But there's also a lot of like, there's also some things that Generation Z does. That I'm like, yeah, good for you, man. It's like they're very much into working through the internet, figuring out games on the internet, and how to make money that way. They don't want to go work at McDonald's for no money. I think that builds character, but at the same time, if you can go straight to making good money, you could do it. They're also not as politically sensitive as that's millennials, true. bro. No, it's like they not. go, they, and I that's the one I don't thing think about you're right about that because they're just as you say something about not using their pronouns, for instance, like don't use yeah, a Gen Zers again, pronouns. That's a small group of, I think that's a smaller group than we want to believe. I don't know. 
I don't know I about that. A small, I think it is a small, small. I, uh, I, I'm I'm with the Tripoli and Howie on this one. I think it's uh what Sam was describing of the algorithm know. trying to pretend that certain mind views are more popular than they are. That that's their play. That's what they did with the vaccines. They pretended like you were an insane conspiracy theorist if you didn't get it. We found out that compliance numbers were only 60 uh 60 percent of the population hadn't got it, and that was even with the man. That was even like with the initial round of you know people being threatened from their jobs. This is interesting. You can look this one up, and this was the earliest version of what we're describing. But Jackson Pollock and um, uh, the guy who who drew like the the things with the cans on it, Andy Warhol. Andy Warhol. Yeah. You know who drove up the prices of that stuff? The CIA. One hundred percent, bro. They wanted to make it look like American art was more popular than it what was. What was that called? Operation. Um. What was it? Operation. I'm gonna stop Robbie and Sam right now. And Robbie, I'm I'm unfortunately I gotta call bullshit. On your fucking CIA involvement okay. with Andy Warhol. Oh my God, dude. Hey. Shut up, Howie. No, I love it's you to pieces. Do You're you so don't, crazy. You don't think <laughs> CIA? Use a little common sense. You know who paid Andy Warhol a ton? Motherfucking Campbell's Soup. Campbell Soup, the publicly traded company. And, and you don't think Campbell Soup's not owned by the CIA, Dude, Howie? Uh, just unbelievable, bro. I can't <laughs> no, even Campbell believe Soup, it right Who do you, who do you now? think's putting soup I, into cans? Campbell Soup is owned by you and I, brother. You can go buy that shit tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, but that was one o'clock. painting, brother. That was one. E. Noam Chomsky <laughs> was controlled opposition. You know how, they all you know were, what, bro. You know what that did to Campbell Soup? Look it yeah. up. That, yeah, put them yeah. on the map. But, Look, pro- but, 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 it's a billion, billion. How is that any different <laughs> than the Dylan Mulcahy or whatever his, her fucking name is? No, what don't compare mean? the two. Don't compare the two because Bud Light is 2% of the whole entire company's gross income. Campbell Soup was Campbell Soup was Campbell Soup turned into a billion yeah, dollars. Dude, it was Bud a Light? different time. It was a different time, Howie. Yeah, but Campbell Soup had one product a red and white can with a billion different types of of soups but anheuser bush has stella and budweiser which are fueling probably 90 percent of the whole company's profits uh bud light's not doing dick nobody's drank bud light since 2012 even you agreed i thought bud light was uh like the number one beer in america i'm not talking about internationally but i believe i don't think bud light is only two i i i, I haven't looked at the percentages but based off of Bud Light U.S. popularity, which I think yeah. it was number one in 2020, and it was growing over the last couple of years, it was I don't. One, think, it was number no one. Way it's, it was the number one domestic beer. You're correct, but that compared, still only makes up two percent of their portfolio. I I bet if that, because you got China and India. You got Bud China Wei- and India. Budweiser's yeah. the number one in selling. They're the number one selling beers in China and India. The number one selling beer in uh, in England. Is Budweiser not Bud Light? Budweiser. Budweiser is the most popular beer in the world. I had to stop drinking it because they uh, were putting more fluoride in it, and I was getting gay thoughts. So even (laughs) before the Bud Light thing, Sam, that happened to you too, right? Oh, dude, I have gay thoughts when I eat anything, bro. That's all I do. I've been having gay thoughts during this podcast, bro. Just crazy fucking gay thoughts. (laughs) Robbie, we love you, dude. Thank you for coming That's on. That's it. That's the whole show. I feel like we're first getting rolling, buddy. No, dude, we're cr- I mean, like, I don't want to keep I, you all day. I know you got to go do Jew shit. Like, I can I'm hang sure. out with you forever. All right. Well, why don't we get into Howie's fucking picks for the week? Hell yeah. Wait, can I? Uh, I got one more because I do think that the currency is going to collapse. So buy the railroads now for the when they start transporting the Jews. You okay. Know, That's guaranteed that- moneymaker. Southern Union? <laughs> yeah. I guarantee you it'll be Gen Z loading the trains, too. <laughs> They'll be right there. Yeah, dude, they're not politically correct. I can't <laughs> okay. get these Jews out yeah, of they, the they do what they're told. They do what they're told Bobby, by the you're, government. You're, you're, you're a smart guy. Can't you fit more of them in an 18-wheeler? Um, Yeah, but it's less reliable. You know, the trains, like, they're just directly on a track. That's the way yeah. to go. Uh, trains can pull more Jews, bro, Yeah, for sure. It's because you know why it's because the Jews whine when you round them up. So you want the spinning wheels of the railroad to drain it out. You don't want them on an 18 wheeler. Exactly. For sure. (laughs) So short Bud Light by the railroads. Okay. Short Bud Light by railroads. Howie, anything else? 
Sure, Anheuser Busch. Let's buy Norfolk Southern. Norfolk Southern's it, it's a low right now because they just poisoned a few communities, so it's probably a good buy. Ooh, can we can we finally say rest in peace, Bad Bath and Beyond? Goodbye. Oh, they're sailing oh, into bankruptcy. Yeah. So there's a there's a stock that I don't know how many people are like, hey, Howie, do I buy it here? Do I buy it here? Do I... Over the past two years, no, 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 no. And where is it now? It's at what ten cents? It's oh, done. Yeah, yeah, I mean it's done. It's, it's, it's sad. One. How many times over the past two years there was a dude on YouTube? I've talked about him over and over. The guy had like four hundred thousand followers. He was a god because he was just pumping AMC every single day. That dude trades trades. Yeah. Remember? He'd be like, no, the short squeeze is in. So AMC went from 35 to, I think it's at four or five. And that dude doesn't even have a channel anymore. He just went in one day and went bleep because so many people fucking listen to this guy. He lost him money. Blows my mind. America's stupid, man. America just is... It opened my eyes up the last week just reading yeah, but shit like everybody's stupid. They're all they're like, dude, where show me the smart people. But if there's there's facts and there's non-facts. Well, well, the problem isn't that people are dumber, it's just they're getting they're getting saturated in stupid knowledge and useless facts. When we human can't being save being... everybody. Maybe when... Bill Gates is right. Maybe like 70% of us have to go. For us to be able to maintain this shit. I I agree with that. But when when a human being types and tweets, uh, BlackRock owns uh, 75% of Dominion. And and if you don't know. Technically, they're right. They didn't tell you which Dominion. No, she's a target. You don't know the difference difference between a voting, a private company and a public. Look, man, you need to come on Cash Daddy's. Just shut up, sit back and learn something. I don't know. How about this, man? Like. I forget what like most they're talking about how most OnlyFans models are broke. Like oh, for nobody's sure. Ma- and then and then the New York Post, they love showing me some fat teacher that just retired and is making a million dollars a year. You know what's happening? They're fucking just OnlyFans is putting the money into that and then they're putting it into the New York Post. So everyone thinks that they should sell their nudes online. Yeah. Yep. And, yeah, totally. and like this gets in the depopulation too, because all these Viking bitches with fat tits and sweet asses are now uh, into low frequency behavior and they're only hooking up with guys who are okay with their chick selling nudes and it's like a low vibrational activity and it's happening more and more why and is more. that low vibrational i would think that's, that'd be high vibration no he's talking uh i get what you did there howie vibrator no, i got no. you i got you that's I got why you. the young that's why the I gen like, zers aren't having kids too that's another worry about that generation they're not having kids i like the way we, sam sees the world different vibrational frequencies there yeah, we go, I mean, bro. There we go. Can I just get Eastern one reading. last story in here? Disney, you know, had their second round of layoffs, and they're keeping 538, but Nate Silver is out. I think that's hilarious. The guy who created 538, and it was his what baby. What is 538? You know, the, the thing that was at the New York Times for a while, where they do all those stats. They crunch the numbers on sports, on elections. Oh. 538 out, pre, pre-Trump. What ha- the, the problem with Trump's first candidacy it, is that it ruined the media – that there were a lot of actually good channels and journalists that realized, oh, we can't put real information into the world, and they changed to censorship. Um, so eight years ago, before Trump won the first time, Five Thirty Eight was actually a very good website. It yeah. was like more in like yeah, math and critical analysis. It was a, uh, it was an interesting read, but com- it was like the same as like Vox and a lot of uh, channels that just once Trump came into office, yeah, they, they got they got the call. Yeah, yeah, they blew they it. The they blew the Trump time thing. to they like. Can- I mean, like BuzzFeed news, like they they literally like we knew it was a lie and we had to put it out. And you committed seppuku. You just literally committed dishonorable suicide by doing that. You played ball because you were the people who sent you money to help you explode, you like and grow into brand you are, said they need you to do this. And it was either said directly or indirectly, and they all played ball. So and it's like everyone could be like everyone hated Trump, you know. They, they, you know, all these people hated Trump, but it's also like it's just like Trump represents a different crime organization, and the organization that had been running everything was pulling in all their favors. Yeah, but let me ask you this: um, I uh, got off the phone with a buddy of mine today in Florida, and he's actually Republican, and he feels that DeSantis made a big mistake. 
by fucking with Disney. He said, you know, he he went beyond and he was told by a lot of people at his party, let it go. Because look, let's be honest. Fucking you can say what you want about Disney. That's their own little mafia. I mean, Disney sure. went to all Disney went right to their little lobbyist dudes. And and now he's he I think he's in a battle that he does he shouldn't be in. I mean, what no, do you guys he fucked up by oh, running he's... against yeah. Trump? He should let yeah. Trump run it out and see, you know. Run out, run the. You're tape. already seeing Fox News picking sides and going with Trump again. They were kind of backing DeSantis, and now they're going back to Trump. It's yeah, DeSantis. Oh. He overplayed his hand. That's what this. That's what this guy said. It just wasn't the time, and whether they're setting Trump up to lose again, and you know, with all this mail and stuff, we'll see. But it was just like at some point you should have realized that it wasn't your time. You, I mean, he did a great job. Everybody. On the right, loves what he did with Florida, but right now, Trump owns the party right now. And that's just what's going on. And he overplayed his hand. And then he started taking donations from swamp creatures, which is who his party hates. Gotcha. All right. Yeah. It's interesting, man. It's interesting. I don't know. But um, uh, that sounds good, man. Fucking Robbie. So your final pick is what? Well, uh, oh, my final pick for the week. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you right now, we uh we rocked it this week with SQQQQ. Uh, it's it's still heading the right direction. A lot of earnings came out today. They were more positive than I thought it would be. So the market may be up a little bit tomorrow, but the bottom line is I'm sitting here, I'm waiting for Bank of America to get to 2850. We've been patient. It's hit 30, 29, 2893. It hits 2850. Uh, do crew's jumping on that thing hard guys we cranked today uh we had options on we had calls on the vix sam these guys made 50 60 percent on these calls over the past three days you're buying uh, options on the vix yeah we made we sold them already we're up to yeah, 50 good for you i mean that's playing with your balls i like it not real you i mean join that... our patreon bro <laughs> no it's, it hit a two-year low and like it was the day to do it. i said let's do it if you didn't want to buy options on it, Robbie, you could have bought UVIX, which is two times what the VIX does, up 15% today. Bang. Bang. I mean, you know, you don't always have to buy stocks to make money in the market. You don't always need a bull market. We're making money with the market going down. Uh, so we, what do we do? We gain dry powder. It's all about dry powder. You got to have dry power, powder to play the market, man. That's what we do. Dry powder, bro. All right, guys. Thank you. Robbie, one more time. Where can they find you? Uh, Robbie the Fire on all social media platforms. Uh, my show is Run Your Mouth. And then, of course, me and Howie Dewey every Wednesday night. We got our comedy show, Cafe Bohemia, 8 p.m. Use promo code FIRE. Tickets are just 5 bucks. We rotate the lineup. Me and Howie are there every week. It's a great time. I love that you guys are working together. That's fucking great. Guys, go to samtriple.com for all my tickets. I got a ton of shows coming. Reno, Mississippi, uh, Louisiana, San Diego. More dates coming. Uh, hopefully, I talk a lot of shit, so we'll see what happens. But uh, more dates coming. And uh, thanks to the love. Thank you, guys. We'll see you guys over there at the Patreon. Patreon.